Hello, I'm Professor Von Schmohawk, and welcome to Why You. In the previous lecture, we saw how to create bounded intervals using either set builder notation or interval notation. We saw that if an interval includes both its endpoints, the interval is said to be closed. In interval notation, included endpoints are enclosed in square brackets. Intervals which do not include their endpoints are said to be open. Excluded endpoints are enclosed in parentheses. It is also possible for one endpoint to be included and the other excluded. If the left endpoint is included or excluded, the interval is said to be left closed or left open. And if the right endpoint is included or excluded, the interval is right closed or right open. Bounded intervals are also called finite intervals since their endpoints limit them to a finite length on the number line. Endpoints create bounds for an interval in the same way that a fence creates a boundary for a plot of land. Just as an interval may or may not include its endpoints, a plot of land may or may not include a fence which creates its boundary. However, whether or not a plot of land includes the fence which creates its boundary, it is still bounded by the fence and therefore limited to a finite area. Likewise, whether or not an interval includes its endpoints, those endpoints bound the interval to a finite length on the number line. So left and right endpoints act as lower and upper bounds for the numbers in an interval. No number contained in an interval is less than its lower bound, or greater than its upper bound. In a closed interval, the left endpoint is the minimum, or smallest number in the interval, and the right endpoint is the maximum, or largest number in the interval. However, since an open interval does not contain its endpoints, open intervals have no minimum or maximum element. To see why, let's take a closer look at an open interval. This interval's right endpoint is the number 1. However, since 1 is not included in the interval, in order to find the maximum number in this interval, we must find the largest number less than 1. If we pick 0 0.9 as the maximum number, we know that this is incorrect since 0 0.99 is larger but still smaller than 1. But this number is still not the largest because 0 0.999 is larger. But this is still not the maximum since 0 0.9999 is larger. No matter how many 9s we keep tacking on, we will never reach a maximum number in the interval. No matter which number we pick, there will always be a number closer to 1. The fact is that there is no maximum number in an open interval. This same logic explains why it is also impossible to find a minimum number in an open interval. However, regardless of whether an interval's endpoints are included or excluded, they still bound the interval to a finite length on the number line. But what if an interval has no upper or lower bound? There are three types of unbounded intervals. If an interval has no upper bound, we say that the interval is right unbounded. In interval notation, this is indicated by replacing the right endpoint with an infinity symbol. In set builder notation, this is a set of all x such that x is greater than or equal to negative 1. If an interval has no lower bound, we say that the interval is left unbounded. This is indicated by replacing the left endpoint with a negative infinity symbol. This is the set of all x such that x is less than or equal to 1. And if an interval has neither an upper nor lower bound, we say that the interval is unbounded on both ends. This interval therefore includes the entire number line and is equal to the set of real numbers. 
In interval notation, an infinity symbol is always enclosed with a left or right parent. This is because the infinity symbol does not represent a number. It is a symbol which indicates that the interval goes on forever in the positive or negative direction. We therefore use the parentheses to indicate that the infinity symbol is not a member of the set. All the intervals we have discussed so far are proper intervals, because they include more than one point. However, it is possible for an interval to include only one point, or no points. In the next lecture, we will explore these degenerate intervals, as well as sets which contain multiple intervals.